Hi there, David Harper here. Now, you know, as an antique dealer at heart, I think I'm pretty lucky because I've never been a collector. And a lot of people find this strange that I don't collect anything. But I think I'm really lucky because I don't suffer with the collector's disease. In other words, not being able to sell stuff. I've never sold anything that I've ever regretted. And as a dealer, you've got to be born with this non-urge to collect stuff. Because if you don't have that, you can buy something, get great pleasure from it, as I do, learn from it, which is vitally important, sell it, get the money and start the process again. So I think not being a collector makes you a better dealer. However, there is one thing in this life that I have bought an inanimate object, not referring to animals, an inanimate object that I will never sell. Here it is. And there it is. It's not even an antique. You see, before TV came along about 20 years ago, part of my antiques business was an antique upholstery restoration business. So we were restoring Victorian and Georgian pieces of upholstery. And as well as that, making one-offs and small ranges, small runs of chairs and sofas, this being one of them. So I bought a fantastic Victorian chair by Holland and Sons in black leather and we restored it and I loved that chair so much I decided to make 10 copies. So when the frame was stripped I had the frame made to exactly the same standard. So hand turned mahogany, hand polished legs, solid brass casters, mortise and tenon beach frames. I mean, you could throw these things out of a top floor window and they would be fine. Even the base was always finished off with hand tack, so no staples on show. We did use staples in the manufacturing process, but that's fine and perfectly normal, to be honest, to use staples. Even with top end pieces like this, you've got to use modern manufacturing processes and materials. And on that subject, below this utterly delicious crocodile embossed leather here, which I'll get to in a minute, are modern materials, but with a traditional kind of nod. So we used horsehair and coconut fiber bonded together in rubber. So it's rubberized horsehair below there. So you push it, it's softer, it's, it keeps its shape longer than just horsehair. But on to now the subject of that leather, which is astonishing. I only made two of these Holland chairs in the crocodile embossed leather for two reasons. One, it was colossally expensive. And two, when I did go back to try and buy some more, they'd run out and they weren't making any more. So there are only two of these chairs in existence. I own one of them. If I find the other one, I will absolutely definitely buy it. So if you see it on your travels or you own it, I want to buy it back just like I did with this one only a few years ago. You see, when I first made these chairs around 20 years ago, we sold them all. And in the Crocodile and Boss leather, it cost about two and a half thousand pounds, which sounds a lot of money. But to be honest with you, there wasn't a great deal of profit in them because of the cost of the materials and putting these things together to that standard. But madly, I walked into Lots Road Auction in London about four years ago, and there, sitting in the sale room, was my chair. I knew I had to have it, so I did. With the commission, it cost me about 1,100 quid. And I'll tell you what, that's the best 1,100 quid I've spent in a very long time. So please do keep an eye out for the matching chair to this one. You know I want it. And apart from the shape, the style, obviously, the leather, this is how you can tell it's one of mine. Kingsley & Co. Handmade Sofas and Chairs. That was the name of the upholstery side of the business, Kingsley coming from my middle name. So there you have it, the one item I could just never sell. I sit in this thing every single day. It's remarkably comfortable, much more comfortable, actually, than it looks. And if ever you've received an email from me, it probably came from this chair. But much more than its comfort, when I'm not sitting in it, but I'm in the same room as it, honestly, I find myself looking at it. To me, it's just a thing of beauty. 
it's gorgeous to look at. Also remember that I know this chair literally inside out. I watched this chair as it came to life on the upholsterer's bench all those years ago. And for all of these reasons, I couldn't bear to part with it. Cheerio.